Anna and George and uh, Igor for your warm words. And Jean-Louis and me, we decided that I should start with a short um, introduction to uh, urban health. Um, can you see it? Yes. yes, there there we are. If you want to start your slideshow, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. So uh, I was uh, thinking a little bit on that topic. I'm not um, um, uh, a guy who worked uh, on um, um, soil health, but I tried to um, concentrate a little bit and to, to go a little bit into the parse how soil health is... Uh, from the development in soil science involved and embedded. So um, here are some sentences and some thoughts and reflection to that. Um, I guess soil became more and more an investment. Uh, that means soil is on the stock market, is share value. And in the center is uh, more or less the productivity, profitability and land speculation are the main targets in the meantime that that has the consequence that we have a, a decreasing number of farmers so of people who are really active and working with soils they are replaced more and uh, more by food companies and so they manage our soil they produce the food and so that means uh, people and societies are losing their feeling what is a good practice for sustainable land use, especially in view of producing crops. So, and from my point of view, the discussion uh, on soil health starts to counteract a little bit this, uh, this movement, but it's, it's difficult because uh, it's a change of the society since about a uh, hundred years and more. And even me, uh, my grandfather and my uncle, they were farmers and the farms were able to let the families survive over generations. That stopped drastically 50 years ago. Since that time, uh, we lost the farms and our land is now leased as more than 50% of the whole agricultural land is leased. So now I go a little bit more specific to the topic of urban soil science. Um, our soil community is optimizing and constructing soil-like substrates. Um, yesterday we discussed it a little bit and um, it's an amazing topic and I asked myself, when do we replace the soil at all? Uh, maybe this time will come faster than we think. So anyway, in the past we were working on um, agricultural problems and uh, that, that is not anymore the case. The soil scientists are not pre preliminary embedded in agricultural questions, they are in, in environmental science question involved. And so the distance between agriculture and soil science become bigger and bigger. Um, so coming back to urban soil, which is uh, urban soil science, which is a relatively young discipline. And I guess uh, an urban soil health discussion did not yet start it from my point of view. Um, Maybe COVID-19 will change this situation. COVID-19 will change everything, the whole society and the way we live together. And I'm sure it will have influence to our discipline as well. So the question is, um, shouldn't we develop new strategies to improve our influence uh, in the society if we want to become more visible if people want to share or if we want that people share our ideas, uh, then there is a high need to, to have more influence. And for this, I guess we need social networks uh, more than we did in the past. 
And my last message is going into the direction of communication. And I try to um, yeah, investigate in soil and art since now more than 12 years. And the reason is who else than soil artists, who else than artists could, sorry, could communicate results of soil scientists in an understandable way. Therefore, I vote for writing proposals together and sharing, for instance, the support for these proposals. I did it in my last two years at the university. It was a tremendous project and we studied cable liners uh, and their behavior in the soil. And we shared this project together with artists. That was a wonderful experience I made. And I hope that the young scientists are going on this way too. So these are a few sentences um, to introduce soil health. And I think uh, Jean-Louis will go on and uh, will deepen um, these reflections. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Gert, and uh, many thanks to our friends, uh, George, and Tatiana, and the other, and thanks for your warm welcome. So I'm always happy to interact with you, and uh, I hope that we will be able to do that in person uh, very soon. Uh, actually, in France, we are locked down, so there is no way we can leave even uh, our house uh, beyond the one kilometer, you know, so, so that's the way it is for one month. Well, so uh, following Gert's uh, presentation, I, I would like to to share uh, some uh, some ideas. Of course, as uh, George mentioned, uh, I'm not a specialist, uh, as well as uh, Gert, in uh, soil health. Uh, since I've been working mostly on pollutants in soil, their fate, and uh, how to remediate soil, uh, soil pollution. But anyway, so I'm really interested in uh, uh, biodiversity, and I would like to share three, three points with, with you. So biodiversity and soil functions. So this has probably been uh, uh, developed uh, during these months. I couldn't attend all presentations and uh, soil health to ensure human health. And uh, of course, I will focus on the pathogens and the, the viruses. And finally, how we can design and build healthy soils. This was uh, discussed yesterday, soil construction, and I will focus on the underground cities. So very briefly, uh, so you know that, of course, soil uh, as a, uh, great, I mean, the, the ability of soil to fulfill its function depends highly on biodiversity. And the uh, uh, soil function derived from natural capital and the processes which bring soil function then ecosystem services. And of course, soil biodiversity is uh, controlled by natural capital as well as the soil function. So there is a, a loop uh, which uh, put soil biodiversity at the first place in the, the functioning of, of the soil. And uh, uh, just to focus on, on what we, we can do, this is the first map of uh, uh, bacterial uh, communities, uh, I mean the specialization of bacterial communities in France. It was uh, uh, prepared uh, thanks to uh, analysis of thousands of soil samples uh, for their DNA content. And you can see the distribution is not uh, regular. It's uh, quite uh, heterogeneous. And uh, it's somehow related to the environmental conditions like uh, soil, uh, soil types, as well as uh, soil uh, properties like pH. And uh, interestingly, soils of disturbed ecosystems like agricultural soils, show a higher diversity than forest soils. And uh, you know that uh, 
in urban areas, uh, soil functions are mainly controlled by anthropogenic drivers. Actually, if we follow the scheme uh, proposed by Dokuchayev uh, in the uh, 18th century, uh, now, nowadays, uh, humans uh, have become the main driver, and uh, that's the reason this arrow, red arrow, is so big because the anthropogenic drivers control the stock and the stocks, the natural capital, and then the processes and the soil function. Urban soils are really different uh, regarding their formation and evolution than other soils. And uh, have a look, uh, we, we have a look at the uh, biodiversity in uh, urban soils, like uh, soy macrofauna. This is uh, about columbolas in uh, uh, several places, forest, rural, suburban, and urban areas. So you can see there is a, a similar uh, density, uh, richness, uh, and uh, diversity in forest and urban areas. And when we go to agricultural area, the richness and diversity is much lower and uh, uh, even the density is uh, quite low uh, in a suburban area. Which means that uh, urban areas uh, create probably uh, conditions which are favorable for the development of uh, uh, the species. Of course, it's just a columbola. This has to be uh, proved also verified for other, other <coughs> communities. And uh, the question uh, is uh, how soil diversity in urban areas, uh, this high soil diversity, how it can influence the biodiversity. So the idea would be since we have a high soil diversity as shown on this uh, photo, uh, we can expect a high biodiversity. And uh, then uh, we have to, to prove that, to, to verify that. Uh, the second point I wanted to, to stress on is uh, human health. Of course, uh, so we have this COVID, the SARS-CoV-2, uh, which is, you know, well, I won't go into detail. But uh, I went through the literature very, very rapidly those last days. and. Uh, uh, if we look at the uh, adverse com compounds and the pathogens, and if we focus on the soil pathogens, like uh, the viruses, polioviruses, hepatitis, AIDS, bacteriophage, and also the prion uh, proteins, uh, there is some work, uh, I mean, uh, quite, uh, uh, there are so many, ma many papers which were published about uh, the fate of those uh, uh, viruses. And the question is, can we derive the knowledge we got about uh, viruses and prion, uh, the behavior of uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, COVID in soil? That's, of course, really a, a big issue. When you, you look at what is, has been done on the the fate of uh, COVID-19 in soils in the recent uh, months, uh, there is not so much, not so much. It's uh, really uh, completely open. Okay, so uh, to make it uh, fast, so the degradation of viruses, uh, we know that the viruses can be degraded by enzymes produced by microorganisms, but it's also uh, mostly virus type dependent and the organic matter is very important in this uh, uh, in those processes and especially the role of plants uh, and the the fate of viruses in the in the rhizosphere the viruses and prion can be mobilized in soils thanks to their strong affinity to organomineral particles which is a uh, pH dependent uh, processes and also aggregation may encapsulate somehow uh, pathogens 
helping them maybe survive uh, longer. And the, as a result of this immobilization, viruses are generally confined at the top of the soil profile. So there is a very low leaching of uh, viruses in, in general. And the risk of transfer to organisms, that's the consequences of this strong immobilization, is runoff and direct contact and uh, also ingestion. And if there is a dissolved organic matter, this could increase leaching. So that's some uh, uh, results we can find in the literature regarding viruses and prion. So do they apply to COVID-19? We, we need to know. And the third point I wanted to uh, discuss with you is uh, uh, maybe kind of science fiction, but not that much. So. Are we going to live in the subsurface? So there are many reasons for that in Japan, for example, to defy an earthquake. And uh, nowadays it's uh, uh, mostly to uh, adapt to harsh, harsh climates and also to mitigate climate change and sustain the biodiversity. So that's maybe the, some of our future. Uh, this is a, an example of a, a underground city, an inverted skyscraper, which was uh, proposed for Mexico City. You can see the feature of this uh, uh, skyscraper. And there are questions about plants. How do they grow? Is there any fertile substrate? Uh, and the uh, people here live in a complete uh, mineral environment. And the, the questions uh, which come, uh, from this uh, uh, possibility is uh, uh, what do we want? Uh, do we want to uh, be connected or fully disconnected with nature? Those are these questions which are addressed to uh, city uh, managers, city planners. And uh, the idea also of augmented soil, which means that soils which are designed to fulfill the fulfill a wide range of functions, including uh, uh, health, human health, and uh, the, those augmented soil would be designed to create indoor sustainable ecosystems. So to bring somehow some nature into those uh, underground cities. And uh, finally, so there are uh, two opposite uh, uh, scenarios. Uh, uh, the one we know actually, actually uh, right now, I mean, uh, uh, living in a completely mineral environment. So it's uh, uh, very often we can see uh, those trees here uh, giving some uh, green uh, color in the, uh, oops, in the, in the space, confined in, uh, in pots. And the soils are fully sealed uh, to ensure water proofing, which is very important and to separate humans from the surrounding. So do we want that? Or do we want the, an alternative scenario which would connect humans to nature and uh, provides, provide also space for other organisms in the underground, like in case, and uh, providing also a healthy environment, including uh, body health and mind, mind health. And uh, so for that, uh, we need the, the designing of uh, uh, soils, which uh, would uh, simulate, I mean, mimic the functioning of a uh, natural soil uh, and providing uh, many services, a wide range of services. And for that, we need appropriate soil engineering. And again, the transition of soil science knowledge into technologies to create functional underground, underground ecosystems. So thank you so much.